Capacitors appear in all types of electronic equipment, from computer-based equipment to radios, televisions, Wi-Fi routers, cell phones. In fact, almost without exception, any piece of electronic equipment will have many capacitors inside it. Big, small, fat, thin, cylindrical, rectangular, capacitors come in all shapes and sizes. They also use different dielectrics and different methods of construction, and this changes their performance. It's important to understand the differences between the different types of capacitor because some work better in some areas than others. In fact, some won't work in some places at all where other types will. So it's important to understand what the different types of capacitor are. This is the circuit symbol for a capacitor. In this case, it is non-polarised. And here we see a polarised one. A polarised capacitor must have any DC voltage across it in the right sense positive at one end and negative at the other. The dielectric or the material between the two capacitor plates is very important. It governs many of the capacitor's properties, things like capacitance levels, voltage withstand, temperature coefficient and many other things. There are a number of types of capacitor that are more common than others and we're going to be taking a look at these. Possibly the most common are the aluminium electrolytic, tantalum, ceramic and finely plastic film capacitors. Beyond these there are several other types like silver mica, glass, supercapacitors and some others but these aren't nearly so common so we won't be covering them in this video. First up is the electrolytic capacitor. This type normally comes in a metal can with an outer plastic sheath. They come in a variety of sizes with a good range of values. They're also available in both leaded and surface mount packages. The markings on the capacitor are printed on the outer sheath. In this first example, it's possible to see the value itself and also the working voltage. Also very important is the mark for the negative terminal to ensure it's connected the right way round. In the next example, the value and voltage are given along with the temperature range and the maximum current. The current rating is very important for applications like use in power supplies where lots of current may be flowing. Let's summarise the main characteristics of the electrolytic capacitor. First, it's polarised having positive and negative terminals and it must be connected the right way round, otherwise damage may result. Aluminium electrolytics normally have large values of capacitance, anywhere from about a microfarad right up to values of, well, I think the largest I've seen is around 47,000 microfarads. They typically have working voltage values up to figures of around 50 volts, but some for use in high voltage supplies may be as high as 350 volts. They have a high ripple current capability, which makes them ideal for use in power supplies, but on the downside they have a relatively high level of leakage and a poor value of tolerance or accuracy, often plus 50% and minus 20%, which rules them out of precision applications. And another limitation is their high frequency performance. They're not normally used for frequencies much above 100 kHz, and use with radio frequencies is definitely out. Another popular type of capacitor is the tantalum capacitor. These capacitors are much smaller than electrolytics as seen here, the leaded versions being in the form of a bead. Surface mount versions are also used a lot, especially these days with mass production. The markings on leaded ones are generally in the form of figures these days, although a colour coding scheme was used some years ago. Markings are normally quite obvious, being the value, working voltage and a polarity indication. For surface mount capacitors, the value is generally marked in terms of the significant figures and a multiplier. So in this instance, the value is 47 times 10 to the power of 5, or 4.7 microfarads. Sometimes the values may be marked more directly, and often the working voltage is added. And of course, the bar across one end indicates the positive terminal. In summary, the main characteristics of the tantalum capacitor are that it is polarised, like the electrolytic, requiring it to be fitted into the circuit in a particular way. They have a high level of capacitance in a very small volume, making them ideal for many of today's miniaturised pieces of electronic gadgetry. 
They're only used in low voltage applications. Typically, maximum working voltages available are around 35 volts or a little more. And fortunately, they have a low leakage level. What they don't like is reverse voltages or over voltages. They can explode if these are exceeded. Oh, and they cannot take high ripple currents as well, so they're not used for power supply smoothing. Ceramic capacitors form the mainstay of many designs. The leaded versions have a number of slightly different formats, but in most cases they're reasonably similar. The surface mount versions are widely used in mass-produced equipment. They're very cheap and easy to manufacture, and are seen on almost every surface mount board. Markings are normally only seen on the leaded versions because the surface mount ones are normally too small. We have a couple of examples of leaded versions here. This one shows the value and the voltage. And this one shows not only the value and the working voltage, but also the type of ceramic, dielectric and the tolerance. So to summarise, the main characteristics of the ceramic capacitor include the fact that it is not polarised. The values range from a few picofarads right up to around about probably 0.1 of a microfarad. The working voltage may be low for those designs using low voltages, although values of a kilovolt or more are available for high voltage applications. There are several different forms of ceramic dielectric that can be used. These vary in their properties, some enabling accurate tolerances to be quoted, whilst others offer high capacitance levels for a given volume. These capacitors are very successful and they're widely used in leaded and surface mount versions. Ceramic capacitors are also widely used for radio frequency or RF applications where they're able to provide excellent performance. Another type of capacitor that is widely used is the plastic film capacitor. Several different types of plastic film may be used, each having slightly different characteristics. Names like polyester, polystyrene and a host of other types are available. In terms of their salient features, these capacitors may use a metallised film or a plastic film with foil between the layers to form the plates. The exact properties are dependent upon the type of film used. Values may range from around 100 picofarads up to possibly even 10 microfarads. And they may have working voltages between 10 volts up to as much as 2 kilovolts. Generally, these capacitors are used as leaded devices, although some surface mount versions are available. But they're not as common as other types because there are issues with the high temperatures used for soldering surface mount components. There we have it, a whirlwind review of some of the major types of capacitor. The electrolytic capacitor, polarised and with high values but low tolerance and high leakage. The tantalum, which provides a large amount of capacitance in a small space, but again polarised, and it doesn't like any misuse. The ceramic capacitor, which is the workhorse of many designs. And finally, the plastic film capacitor with a variety of different types of film for the dielectric. Music